Hey, what's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to go in depth on how to use the collaborations feature that was added in SketchUp 2026. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in SketchUp 2026, the ability was added to collaborate on a model and share it even to people that don't have SketchUp. And so in this video, we're going to talk about exactly how to do that. And so to start off, in order to add collaborations, you need to save your model to Trimble Connect. So let's say that we wanted to leave a comment about one of these light fixtures. Um, so there's a button at the top of the page called Add Comment. If I mouse in here and click it's going to usually add a comment, but in this case, it's going to tell me this model needs to be saved to Trimble Connect in order to be shared. Um, so basically, this is only going to work on Trimble Connect models, which kind of makes sense because people do need to be able to access it from a cloud location. So we're going to go ahead and save this to Trimble Connect. And so we're going to go ahead and click on the Save button, and it's going to save this to the cloud. While we wait, if you do want to download this model and follow along, it's called the Sushi Restaurant by Max W, and you can find it in the 3D Warehouse. Okay, and so now we're saved. And notice how this added a comment wherever we clicked. And so over here on the right-hand side of the page, you can see the comments that have been added right here. And in this case, if we wanted to, we could put something in like replace these light fixtures. And you can hit the send button, and that's going to apply this comment to the model. Well, now what that means is that means if you're flying around the model and you want to view the comment, you can just click on it and it's going to take you to the view that you were in as well as show you the note or the comment that um, you added over here. And so if you ever want to get back to this, there's a Trimble Connect bar over here. And if you don't see it, you can right click and click on the option for Trimble Connect. But it's going to give you the status of your model showing that this is a certain version as well as if you click on the button right here it's going to pop out the collaboration bar so the collaboration bar is going to give you the ability to see the comments in the model and you can also share the model from this bar so let's say i wanted to add this to someone who has an email address that doesn't use sketchup so in this case i'm going to click on the option to share and what this is going to do is this is going to get a this is going to pop up a window it's going to allow you to send a share link to anyone else that wants to access the model and so you can either share a link which i'll show you how to do in a minute or you can invite other people by name or email now remember when you first do this so let's say i'm going to send this to my cg essentials account which is for my blender channel so i'm going to select that right here i'm going to make sure that i check the box to notify users and notice how i can give them the option to either view scenes or comment we'll look at a view scenes link in a minute but in this case i want to go ahead and i want to give them the ability to comment and i'm just going to send a message which is come look at my model and we'll click on invite and so what this is going to do is this is going to send an invite and they're going to have to join my contacts first before they can view the model we're going to click on invite and that'll send me an email that looks like this and so in this case i can click on the option to join and when i join that's going to take me to the viewer where i can view the sketchup model right here now this user might need to create a Trimble Connect account or a Trimble account. Um, that's not going to have any cost associated with it, but if they don't have a Trimble account, they're going to have to have one in order to sign in. Okay, so once they've created a Trimble Connect account, they're going to have to join my contacts in order to continue. So in this case, I'm going to click on join, um, and this is all a verification, and it only has to happen once. Um, after it happens the first time, then sharing with them is really seamless, but you do need to join that person's contacts is an additional security thing so i'm going to click on the option for join right here and so one more thing that that's going to do is that's going to send an email back to my initial email address um, and i'm going to have to um, as the main or the admin of the model i'm going to have to accept that person as a member of my contacts and so i got an email back saying that there was a share request as the admin i'm just going to go to manage my sharing and i'm going to click on share and now they're going to be able to access the model so now we can click on OK, and you can see how I get a list of the people on here that now have access to this model. And so then I can open the model and fly around in it. And that's a one-time thing, so you only have to do that once, and then after that, anything I share is going to be a lot more seamless. And so notice how, and this is a little bit difficult for me to demonstrate, um, I'll probably go to like a split screen in order to do this, but notice how I can see where my Justin account 
cursor is in the three-dimensional space. So we'll do kind of a split screen here and I'll go ahead and I'll hide my tray just so you can see this. So notice how if I fly around like this, my cursor is going to show up on the other account screen right here. So wherever my cursor goes on the left-hand side, you're gonna be able to view that on the right-hand side. So if you have another person in the view, right, you can see where everyone is and you can have multiple different people in the model at the same time. And so if you don't want your cursor to be seen, you can come up here and you can just click on the hide cursors option right here. But notice how in this view, I can access things like the comments by coming over here to the right hand side, clicking on comments and I can see the comment and also the view that we had in here, just like this. So any comments that I have inside of here by anyone are going to be able to see. So um, in this case, for example, if I was to leave a comment as the Blender channel over here on the right-hand side, so I can just click on comments right here, and I could just say, make this a different kind of wood right here. And I can click on this button right here. Well, that comment is going to now show up in here, and it'll also show up over here. So notice how now I can see that comment and I can click on it in the SketchUp Essentials window right here that I have on my um, on my desktop version. So uh, this gives you the ability to have multiple users, leave multiple different comments and other things like that, which is pretty cool. And so the other thing is the comment owner. So in this case, I left this one with the Blender channel, can mark comments as resolved. So if I click on resolved, what that's gonna do is that's going to roll this up down below as a resolved right here. So actually using this as a checklist of things that need to be completed inside of a design is actually pretty smooth and pretty seamless. So from that standpoint, that's pretty cool. And the sharing is pretty cool as well, actually. And so just real quick, I wanted to take a look at the other things that the viewers can see. So this account right here is a view only account, right? I can't go in here and adjust the model, but what I can see inside of the model, if I make this a comment, link and I'm going to pop this over right here is I can see things like entity info so I can click in and select things and see their entity info and so most of these things on the right hand side are grayed out right I can't toggle these on and off as a viewer but as the project owner I can so if I go back into SketchUp right here and let's say that we were to toggle on our shadows so we're going to turn on the shadows bar I guess it already is turned on there we go so I'm going to toggle shadows on right here. Notice how if I jump back over into this other view, the shadows are now toggled on in this view as well. So the owner can drive what people can see inside of this view. And so one other thing that's kind of cool is you can also direct people to click on their name right here. So if I click, click to follow right here, and I click to follow the Justin Geis icon. Well, now if I fly around over here on the left-hand side, they can also see what's happening in my view on the right-hand side. So whatever's happening in this SketchUp model right here is also being reflected everywhere else. And one thing I haven't tested, and we can go ahead and test this right now, is if I come in here and make a change to this model. So say that I was to add a different material. So I'm gonna push pull this up and I'm going to I'm also going to toggle shadows off just to make this a little bit faster. Notice how that changes over here as well. But say that I add a material. So I'm going to use my paint bucket tool. And let's say we made this a gold metal right here. So I'm just going to make this change right here. And I'll click off of here. Well, notice how that change is also going to happen over here on the right. So this is truly like live viewing of the model, which is pretty cool. I can see some applications for that inside of meetings and looking at different options and things like that. So depending on the kind of collaboration that you're looking to do, um, this is actually something that could be pretty powerful if you are trying to do that like live viewing or presentation or whatever. Now, two other things that I want to point out. So first, and this is one that I really like, is I really like the ability to apply photos to your comments. So in this case, say I wanted to replace these chairs with something different. Well, not only can I leave a comment, I can click in here. So I'm gonna click on the add new comment button right here. I'm gonna click on this object and I'm going to say replace these chairs with this chair. And I'm just going to click on the plus button right here and it gives me the ability to add photo. And so notice how this now shows up as a comment. And if I click on it, it's going to take me to the view 
where that was when we left the comment. So I can see that it's applied to this chair and I can see this photo that says replace these chairs with this chair. Now, if I click on it, I can see that chair right here. So you, you can use this in order to communicate like product data as well. And so another place you could use this is if you had an existing building, for example, and you've got a model right here and you had a photo of the outside, you could leave a comment right here with a photo of the existing exterior of the building. So you could also use this as a pretty effective tool for documenting exterior or interior existing conditions as well, which is something as a general contractor, I could see myself using all the time. If I had an existing model and a proposed model and I wanted to have a whole bunch of photos in here of different conditions, this would be a good tool to manage that. I have no clue as to the limitations of how many comments you can leave or anything like that. I've not seen anything about that, but um, I, I could definitely see myself using this for that. Okay, and so one other thing you can do, which is pretty cool, is you can also share a link that only allows viewing of certain scenes, right? So up till now, everything that we've done when we shared this is we've shared it with the ability to add comments, right? You've got a commenter right here, but let's say for example, that I was to go in here and change this. So, or you could just use a link down here. So notice how I could do a view scenes or view model right here. So view model is going to give access with a link where you can fly around the model view scenes is going to give you the ability to only view certain scenes. So you could either copy that link or you can change the um, access of different users. So if I change Blender channel to view scenes and click on save, well, now if I go back to that view for Blender channel, notice how it tells me that the permissions for the model has changed and it's going to refresh the page. Well, when it refreshes the page, now I'm only going to have the ability to see what the owner wants me to see, which is going to be the scenes inside of the model. So once that loads up, that's gonna give me a list of scenes on the bottom of the page that I can click between. So I can click on the little button right here in order to view the scenes, but notice how I can scroll between those. And in this case, I can still see the model view. I can still, still see the cursors wherever those are gonna be. But in this case, I can only see these views right here. So I can click on these in order to see the different viewports like this, but I can't actually fly around the model, which I think for a lot of users is actually going to be desired because sometimes you don't want to give like full fly around and look at everything access because there's only certain things that you've detailed, right? Like there's no work that's been done in the kitchen back here or anything like that. And so sometimes you only want people to be able to see the views that you want them to be able to see. Well, this view scenes link gives you the ability to do that. And they can click on the play button in order to kind of animate between the different scenes. One thing I will note about this is this is a bit slower. Um, it's not super slow, um, but you could see kind of clicking between the scenes, it slowed down a little bit. Um, but this gives you the ability to kind of animate between those. It's just that you're viewing these on a web viewer and it's not quite as powerful. So it does take a second or two in order to um, actually go between the different scenes. But this is an interesting application for me because I could create this kind of like on rails experience for people, which I actually see almost being more helpful for me than like the live flying around and giving people like a fly around link. Um, the ability to pick what they see and then send that over is something that's extremely interesting to me. All right. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how the collaboration functions in SketchUp work. Leave a comment below. I'm curious. Is this something you would see yourself using? Is this something you're interested in? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.